So... Once again, folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 most powerful primary weapons. Now, a quick disclaimer for this list. This list is more geared towards Steel Path gameplay, not Star Chart. So if you're looking for anything Star Chart, literally use whatever you want because Star Chart does not matter. Now, why Steel Path? Well, because enemies are tougher and you can see the full potential of these weapons. And another thing is that DE did change in Karnan weapon charging. Now, what does that mean? Meaning if you do too much damage and kill the enemy with one shot, you don't get much in Karnan meter charge. Meaning, if you have a properly built weapon, you're going to be one-shotting everything in Steel Path, and if you're using an Incarnate weapon, you're not going to see its Incarnate mode much or at all within the Star Chart missions. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at number 10, and that is the Dread or Paris Prime Incarnate. Now, why did I choose both of these? Well, because they're pretty much similar, and it depends which one you have. Well, are there any significant differences? Very, very minuscule. Paris does have slightly more base damage and a higher status chance perk, while Dread has an additional damage multiplier and a gimmick where you can go the full stalker loadout to get even more damage. And if I'm not mistaken, Dread has a slightly wider projectile. Otherwise, they're pretty much the same weapon. They serve the same purpose. And if you want a bow that isn't the Naturuk or the Sinta, where you have to have that pinpoint accuracy to get the full damage output, well, these two are your best picks. They have great damage, great crit stats, and you can have several builds with these weapons. In terms of how to mod this weapon, I do have an entire guide for the Paris Incarnate. And it's better that I don't add it here because it can get a bit in depth. So that video will go over every single evolution and traits that you want for your optimal Paris Incarnate build. And at number 9, the Kuva Zar. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. This was clearly one of the best and top tier weapons back in the days. When I say back in the days, I mean just earlier this year. Until DE decided to gut ammo economy. Meaning, it hurt a lot of weapons that use special type of ammo. In this case, that hurt Kuva Zar. Did this change hurt the damage? No, the damage is still very powerful and optimal. You can clear hordes of enemies very easily. However, the only issue is ammo, and you can easily fix that by using either the Energized Munitions Helmet ability or having Dispensary and the Aura Rifle Scavenger, basically increasing your ammo pickup rate. On top of that, I do have that particular loadout on my recent Wisp Prime video. But to take a look at a simple Kuvazar build, we do have our base damage coming from Primary Merciless. Since this is an AoE weapon, we're not going to be headshotting, or if you want, you can use Primary Dexterity. It's a simple fix. It is bonus toxin, so that is why I added primed cryo rounds. And then everything else is just pretty basic. Crit chance, crit damage, and that primed cryo rounds to give viral. So now we can slot in hunter munitions, our multi-shot mod, prime firestorm for the large AoE blast radius, our faction damage to multiply all of our damage, and prime fast hands for that reload speed because the Zar does reload per chamber. So it's best to have a higher reload speed, pair that up with Merciless, to give us that juicy, not really juicy, but we lowered our reload speed to 2.6 seconds. And of course, don't forget your Vigilante supplies. Or you can have a primed ammo mutation mod. That's it. Okay, now at number 8 with the Telios Boltor in Karnin. I chose the Telios version instead of the Prime because of the Syndicate gimmick. So the Telios goes from a regular auto rifle with bolts that pin enemies to the wall into a crazy fast firing shotgun, which completely devours the Coover comb and pretty much steps on the Soma Incarnan. I don't know what happened with the Soma Incarnan there. DE, I, I, is, are you gonna do something about that? Apparently not. Anyway, from a fast firing projectile to this crazy fast firing shotgun that can destroy any enemy you want. Pretty decent for bossing, amazing in disruption, and of course, just amazing in general in normal gameplay. And because this is Incarnate, I do have an entire video catered to this weapon, showcasing everything that it can do. Yes, it is going to be linked right here, so do go check that out. 
And at number seven, we're taking a look at the Kuva Chakur. Kuva Chakur is just an amazing freaking rifle. It is a futuristic flintlock rifle, not a sniper. Mine is bonus toxin, so that gives me an additional mod slot for other damage multipliers or utility. And yes, I did test this entire list live on stream, and we had a blast with the Kuva Chakur. 1.2 million bleed. 1.3 million bleed. I mean... Especially hitting 1.3 million bleed ticks. When you shoot this weapon, it explodes on contact. And the explosion force procs impact. Meaning it is a prime candidate for the internal bleeding mod. Instead of using hunter munitions. Taking a look at the build. Well, it's pretty similar to the Kuvazar. However, we did swap out some things. I'm using primary merciless for our base damage. Crit chance, crit damage. The usual rhyme rounds instead of prime cry rounds to give us cold and that increased status chance just so we can proc a little bit more viral internal bleeding instead of hunter munitions because of that large impact explosion faction damage to double dip on those bleeds and your final mod can be whatever you want i decided to use galvanized scope just for the red crits you know it, it looks fancier otherwise i will definitely go for bladed rounds for a bit more crit damage since the weapon itself gets to 150 percent crit chance with just a critical delay now, my friend is at number six. We have the Tinit Plasmir. This is a corpus version of a Kuva weapon for the Arca Plasmir. Another crazy thing about this weapon that it has multiplicative gun CO. You know what that means, right? More damage. What is gun CO? Well, it is the galvanized aptitude mod. This functions just like condition overload. More unique status effects on a target will increase your base damage. However, when I said multiplicative, meaning instead of working like base damage, it functions like a clip meaning it gives you a final weapon damage multiplier, hence why it does a lot more damage. I did take this weapon against level 9999 with Mag since it synergizes so well with her. It shoots out a pulse wave that staggers enemies dealing impact damage with the innate and modded elements. And this pulse wave is a projectile that can ricochet off of surfaces and enemies. Increasing its projectile flight speed will of course increase its travel time and additional ricochets. And of course, of course, since this is a Kuva Tenet weapon, I did go with bonus toxin, so making it easier for me to mod. Taking a look at the build, very simple. Base damage is, of course, and again, primary merciless, because we're running a Hunter Munitions build right here. The usual crit chance, crit damage, and I did increase its magazine capacity, so I have more shots. And Galvanize Savvy for that juicy condition overload scaling. Also have a corrosive build. All I had to do was change the element to prime charge shell. Instead of Hunter Munitions here, I did decide to go with shotgun barrage to increase the fire rates and that's pretty much it a strong powerful weapon but you should definitely try it out with mag and now on to number five phantasma or phantasma prime either one works both are very very powerful now what is the difference between phantasma and phantasma prime for one the prime is slightly more crit viable and that's about it so it depends which one you want to use because at the end of the day it's still going to be a heavy status applicator for crazy dot scaling you can go with viral and heat builds or viral and electric builds it's innate radiation has a low magazine but high reload speed and a decent amount of fire rate. It pairs with pretty much any type of Warframe. Great for endurance and great for quick and easy missions. Its alternate fire is an explosive blob, which then detonates to then have heat-seeking projectiles track and hit enemies which has a lot of impact procs. Taking a look at the builds. For the first Viral and Heat build, it's a typical build without any crit mods. Heavily focused on increasing our heat damage and adding Viral there, just for the application and not the damage, because our main damage source is going to be heat. However, if you're going to use Arcan Avenger for the flat 45% crit, then we can easily replace Blaze with Primed Ravage. And for the electric build, that synergizes super well with Giant. All I did was replace the heat mod with prime charge shell to give us that large electric damage boost. And since she crits like crazy, I am using prime ravage to increase that critical damage multiplier. This, this also works for not using it with gyre, and you have other sources of crit increase. Okay, okay, now at number four, another shotgun, the Booba Nico. Booba Nico is an infested arm cannon, which is also a shotgun. It has innate toxin on its primary fire and an alternate fire, which is viral, meaning you can build for hunter munitions without even modding for viral on the weapon. 
And Jess, by adding a singular element, gives it a dual combination, meaning I can have corrosive, viral, and electric by just slotting in an electrical mod. That's how amazing this weapon is. Compared to the Cedo, it does have higher base damage and is multiplicative with gun CO. The only downside is that its alternate fire does consume the ammo pool, so you definitely want an increase in your magazine. But what's also good is that it's a battery weapon, meaning you never have to worry about ever running out of ammo. This weapon is so freaking powerful, I did take it into a level cap disruption, rivenless of course, without any additional elemental buffs. So yes, I went with a non-elemental build, which is the Hunter Munitions build. For the base damage, I have Primary Merciless, the usual crit chance crit damage, Fire Rate with Shotgun Barrage, Primed Ammo Stonk for the increase in magazine, and of course, Galvanize Savvy for that Gundition Overload boost. As you can see right there, Alternate Fire does have Viral and Toxin on its Primary Fire. The gunplay is very simple, Alternate Fire to then switch into your Primary Fire. And for the Corrosive build, very simple primary deadhead for that juicy base damage and headshot damage multiplier while also reducing your recoil. So this is an additional boost to our damage. Laser sight for the additional crit chance when we headshot while aiming down sights. This is basically Argon scope but for shotguns. And unfortunately it does not have the galvanized version of this to give you that additional crit chance. Laser sight paired with critical deceleration will give us 105% crit chance meaning we're going to be consistently critting. And with just prime charge shell, we're going to have corrosive on our primary fire while having viral and electric on our alternate fire. And now here we are at the top three weapons, looking at the Latron and Karnin. This weapon actually blew my mind. It's a regular semi-auto rifle, while in its incarnate form allows you to shoot out these heat damage projectiles that ricochet everywhere as they deal damage and explode on contact. And its final evolution allows you to turn puncture procs into armor stripping machines. On top of that, puncture procs were recently buffed so that if you proc enough puncture, you get 25% flat crit, boosting your damage output. Yeah, this weapon is clearly insane. And if you want to know more detail about this weapon, I do have an entire video based around it, with all its evolution, perk trees, and how to build it. Again, check that out. Funny enough, same thing with the last two weapons. Speaking of the last two weapons, here we are at number two, looking at the Bursted Incarnan. Oh yeah, I love this weapon. It is one of my favorite Incarnan weapons, and what makes it even deadlier is that both its normal and Incarnan form are insanely powerful. Another Incarnan adapter that puts the Soma Prime to shame. In its normal mode, it's a burst fire rifle, but its Incarnan form turns into an LMG with 600 rounds in the mag. And the bullets are heat damage, so you can build it for heat inherits, hunter munitions, corrosive heat, whatever you want, and it can still destroy everything. It's so powerful, I even made two videos about this, and one of them is taking this weapon against level 9999. So again, for more details, do go check out those videos. And before we hit number one, we got some honorable mentions. You guys like honorable mentions, right? I don't. I just want to get to the point. But for easy, easy, simple content that anybody can do, right? You have the Ignis Wraith. Everybody recommends this, and I do too. It's a great beginner weapon that actually takes you even further. Just to prove it can do something, I did take it to level cap. You know, just to show, hey, it can do something, guys, you know? Another great pick is the Cedo. If you don't have the Booba Nico, the Cedo is a great tool. Not as strong, but it's still damn powerful. You can have great synergies with Mesa and her first ability augment. A slash beam weapon that scales crazy high, mostly useful in high endurance disruption content against armored units, you got the Convectrix. But yes, you do need the infamous augment. And for bows, you do have the natural. You get this bow for free by completing the new war quest. A very strong and solid weapon. All right, here we are, boys. Drum roll, please. One of the most powerful weapons right now that you can have in your arsenal is the Torrid Incarnin. Yeah, who would have thought you'd see Torrid on a top 10 primary weapon list? It's so easy to charge Incarnin, you just have to directly hit enemies. You don't need to headshot or anything like that. Drop your load on enemies and activate Incarnin mode. This is one of the strongest beam weapons in the entire game right now. Chaining to enemies and dealing heavy damage synergizing with a lot of builds and a lot of warframes. 
You can build it for raw corrosive damage and viral hunter munitions. And another great thing about this weapon is that it's innate toxin. So that means it's easy modding, freeing up a mod slot for other damage multipliers. And I have an entire video dedicated to this weapon. So for more info and everything about it, do go check it out. Anyway, folks, that has been it from this video. It's been a long time since I last released my top 10 primary weapons. I did have to wait for a while just to see what DE is going to do with these incarnate weapons. And... Here we have them. So, for those who enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Bye-bye now.